Um, something which I, I have, uh, I think I saw it, um, saw it today, but I'd seen it before as well. And I'd always like kind of thought, oh, if I ever make, you know, hundreds of hundreds of thousands of, uh, dollars worth of Bitcoin, then I might pick up one of these is the, uh, the first edition, uh, of the Bitcoin magazine, which you guys sell and it goes for a thousand bucks on the site. Um, quick question on that one. Um, how many, how many do you know how many copies there are of them available because obviously i assume you guys aren't going to be reprinting them so do you know how many copies there are actually available left and then second question onto that like do you guys have any more print copies coming in soon that you can tell us about like what the next uh print version of the magazine is going to be and, and when that's coming awesome questions and uh yeah so the first edition obviously we're not going to reprint that that is the that is the original um you know we're, we're in the low hundreds of those available. Um, and then if you actually go to our site, you can buy the entire collection, um, uh, you know, first, first through 24th uh, edition. So there's been 24 Bitcoin magazines so far. Um, so you can get all of those. Uh, so that, I think that's actually a great deal. But you can kind of effectively see which uh, of the original Bitcoin magazines are more abundant based on the price. So um, you know, effectively, we kind of have a tier of scarcity uh, for all of them. And we, uh, and, and that's kind of how we price them out. But yeah, uh, the first edition is one, one of the most popular, one of the most iconic. Uh, and uh, there's very few of them left. So uh, if you can collect them, this is the time to do it. Uh, we were talking, to, I was talking to a gentleman at Bitcoin 22. He was buying one for himself. Literally two minutes later, came back. He was like, all right, I need to get two. So, um, they're, you know, the collectors are definitely taking them off the shelves and, you know, that thousand dollar price tag, it might go up soon too. So, um, as, as the scarcity kicks in, you know, we increase the price in order to, you know, allow people to continue to collect them into the future. But, um, you know, the value of that magazine, I think is going to continue to, maybe it's not going to go up with Bitcoin. Like it's not going to track as much as Bitcoin, you know, you should hodl Bitcoin instead, but um, you know, as Bitcoin gets more valuable and relevant, hopefully Bitcoin magazine maintains its place as uh, a leading voice amongst like Bitcoin enthusiasts uh, in the Bitcoin world. Uh, that magazine is going to increase in value for sure. Uh, I have a copy myself. It's, uh, it's, it's framed. I'm, I'm actually moving so you can't see anything behind me, but um, normally I have like a shrine of Bitcoin behind me, including that magazine, but now it's all packed up. Um, but yeah, in terms of new magazines, you know, you can continue to collect Bitcoin magazine right now. You can get we're, we're doing a issue every single quarter um, and you can subscribe to that annual subscription for like 50 bucks. So uh, those magazines, you know, we should I honestly think we should have a collector version where, you know, you get it's you get two magazines every shipment. You get one that you can read and they're absolutely they're thick. They're beautiful. You want to put it on your coffee table. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And then you have one that's like plastic wrapped and sealed uh, that you can save because, you know, that collection is going to go up in value. And this like, you know, this new version of Bitcoin magazine that we launched last year with the El Salvador edition, it's it's absolutely a fantastic product. It's, it's just head and shoulders above any magazine we've ever produced before. Uh, and now we're going on to our third issue of the kind of like the re the reboot. Um, and this is going to, the third issue. So it went the El Salvador issue, the moon, the to the moon issue, which dropped at Bitcoin 22. Uh, and then now we're dropping the censorship resistant issue. And there's another one that's already in the works for next for the following quarter. So, uh, it's just incredible to see the product come together. It's an amazing read. Uh, the safety Dean special was in the to the moon issue. Uh, Ricardo mentioned that. And uh, there's some really, really great stuff in this censorship resistant issue. So uh, if you don't have a sub, you, you're going to want to get that. Go to the Bitcoin Magazine store online, get a subscription, shipping internationally. Uh, if you can also get it at your local bookstore. It's at Barnes and Nobles and another big uh, retailer in Canada. Uh, so uh, trying to get Bitcoiners, what, you know, the ability to get their hands on this future collectible, but also just incredible you know, piece of Bitcoin in this moment. In an era where everything is going digital and, 
you're discussing a digital money that could possibly phase out paper money. Um, why did you guys decide to print paper copies? You know, BitcoinMagazine.com, like that's happening every single day. So that's absolutely digital. Um, but I just think when the world is so digital, Bitcoiners love collectibles. So, you know, it's not like we're trying to put the news in this magazine. Uh, we're really trying to, every single issue, have something that's immortal right? So have this thing be something where you pick it up and you're like, wow, one, this is immortal, but two, this is what it was like when the Canadian truckers had to use Bitcoin, you know, in, in 2021 and or in 2022. And that was part of Bitcoin's journey to relevance. So like that's history. And, you know, Bit we, we just think Bitcoins are going to want to collect that. So uh, really our entire offering in terms of our store is like merchant swag and then collectibles. So uh, I do think that the Bitcoin magazine in print is going to be an amazing and continue to be an amazing collectible for Bitcoiners and Bitcoin history. Uh, you know, the first, or I think that our, we have an issue in the Smithsonian, uh, in the history of money section. And I think that that's going to continue. Uh, so, you know, and it's, it's awesome. It's just awesome too. Like there's no better way to like meet someone and be like, Hey, my company is real. Bitcoin's real. This is history than handing them that magazine. It's just like, it's, it's an incredible physical orange pill. Uh, so, you know, it's not everything that we do. We're very digital, but you know, it's a small thing that we do that I think it actually, it, it punches way above its weight, if you will, if you will. Yeah, I guess as things go more digital and as, uh, you know, we're told we're going to own nothing and be really happy about it, then it's actually sometimes nice to have like a physical copy of something. That's for sure. You know, uh, you, you will own Bitcoin and you'll own Bitcoin magazine and I guarantee you'll be happy. <laughs> Sounds like a solid uh, guarantee. I can I can see, yeah. I can hear the sales. Fuck in the weave. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it, man. I like it. Um, I think like... um. I've got like a lot more going around in my head about the, the conference now because we've been we've been hammering at you about the magazine. But I guess one the question I wanted to ask you, I guess um, a pretty straightforward question, but like how how are you guys like making money basically? Like, do you guys allow like sponsored posts and stuff like that, or is it mainly just like, how how is it that you're obviously you, you, I'm assuming you do fundraising and there's there's various like stuff that all magazines. But I don't know if there's anything different that you guys do, or what's the simple kind of formula I guess for you. Uh, so we don't do sponsored content. Uh, sponsored content's weird. You know, ultimately sponsored content is someone wanting to pay you so that way they can get a do follow link on your website that has high authority. That's just like that. That sucks. We, we're not into that. So we don't do sponsored content um, at all. Um, but, you know, we, we do run an advertising led business, right? So that means our content is all editorial, but there is advertising that runs on top of it uh, we also sell our own products right so uh the bitcoin conference the biggest bitcoin conference in the world you know tickets to that are a nice revenue generator um obviously sponsorship for that that's uh all all the biggest companies in the space spend a considerable budget on on the conference um and that that's a, a massive driver and we are building and uh, constantly creating new and better products for companies to sponsor. So um, we have some new ones rolling out. BitMEX just sponsored Bitcoin Magazine Pro, which is our premium markets intelligence newsletter. Um, so, uh, you know, a as we continue to kind of build out our suite of products, there's more products for uh, businesses in the space that are Bitcoin focused to to uh, reach our audience? Okay, so from like the magazine perspective, it is yeah um, uh, simple enough in a sense that it's like the sponsorship around the magazine and and, and advertisements etc. And then obviously there's the other products, right? So so not sponsored posts, sorry, but like um, adverts. Around, around, yeah, yeah, sorry, that's what I mean. Um, and then obviously there's other products, so it's like you know the I said the email newsletter and then the conference and there's various different things you're building out that help bring in more and more revenue and. I imagine you'll totally. keep innovating. As you Our go business along. has multiple streams of revenue. Uh, you know, just to put things into perspective, Bitcoin 22, like the amount of capital that goes through that event is on the round of multiple fundraising rounds for a large unicorn company. So like that by itself is a massive thing for our business, right? That is a business by itself. 
And obviously we want to be as as much more anti-fragile than having a once year profitable event. You know, we want to have shows and newsletters and all this kind of stuff. So uh, a lot of it is in development. A lot of it is currently available. I mean, you can hit, um, you can hit sales at btcmedia.org if, if you want to advertise with us, we have a lot of great products too. So, but um, you know, you can advertise in the print magazine and that has global reach and uh, is, a, is like, it's almost like a mortal advertising. So you're not only going to drive sales and branding now, but uh, people will look back and be like, wow, that company was a part of the history of Bitcoin. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of incredible advertising and uh, you know, it's awesome to be at such a young media company and have such developed media stream or uh, revenue streams and not have to be uh, dependent on, you know, investors or, you know, some, someone writing a big check in order for your unsustainable business to maintain. Bitcoin uh, 2022 was a massive event. Um, what goes into organizing an event like that? Like, how, how do you guys go about it? You know, there is a, there is a team of 40 people that scales up to a thousand hands. Uh, for the actual event. Um, there's a multi-million dollar budget. Uh, there are years of negotiating with vendors and venues and cities and building relationships. Um, it's nine to 12 months of just heads down work on one project. Uh, so, I mean, anyone who's put on an event that it reaches the magnitude of you know, tens of thousands of people you know, it's, it's no joke. Every detail matters. The public scrutiny is insane. Uh, the city of Miami, uh, in Miami beach said that like on an order of magnitude, this was the most covered event that's ever happened in Miami beach's history. Um, so like that takes a year to make happen, you know, and that takes having the best brand in the world, which is Bitcoin. Um, and (laughs) acknowledging that you should focus on that, um, you know, for years before, um, before it kind of really hit this point in the market. So, I mean, it, it's a lot of work, you know, talk to someone who does money 2020 CIS, any of these massive events, you know, it's crazy. So um, it, it's crazy that I have three under my belt as well. So uh, happy to go bigger and better Bitcoin 23. We're announcing dates and venue very soon. And we have some more surprises for, uh, for the Bitcoiners out there. So you mentioned the Bukele announcement. And then uh, this year, we also saw that um, Madeira, the island in Portugal, announced. And then um, also in Honduras, there was the, um, I forget, the Prospera, I think it's called, the um, autonomous community that, that they're building it in Honduras, announced that they were going to be adopting Bitcoin also. Um, what do you think about this phenomenon where the conference is kind of like the place where people are making these kind of announcements? We, I wish we got the Central African Republic announcement. That would have been absolutely epic, but no one saw that coming. We were joking around that, like, who went to the Central African Republic? Oh, no one? Man, maybe we should stop sending Bitcoin to these places and just let Bitcoin do its thing. But, uh, you know, that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a platform for Bitcoin Signal to kind of congregate around. So um, I think the industry needed kind of this annual heartbeat uh, we are honored that we've built a platform that the industry is kind of uh, coalescing around. And we understand that that's sensitive and that uh, if we don't continue to kill it on our end, that zeitgeist will move away. You know, the industry and the space and the Bitcoin ecosystem doesn't really owe our event anything. But as long as we continue to put the biggest, best event that's most Bitcoin focused, that is where Robin Hood is going to want to show up to try to please Bitcoiners and, and show them that they're Bitcoin focused. That's where BitPay is going to say, hey, we're aligning with BTC and we're announcing Lightning. Um, you know, that's where Jack Maulers is going to, you know, enable uh, a country to come online to Lightning and, and you know, bless us with, uh, you know, having the announcement happen at our conference. You know, I think there's a reason he's announcing it at our conference and not a different conference. And that's because, you know, we created a platform that, um, that, you know, inspires and gets him excited. So um, I think it's just about continuing to do that. So uh, I think we have a great, we're we're possession to do that, but um, you know, it's, it's not, it's never going to be 
handed to us on a silver platter. You mentioned like a couple of um, reasons as to why uh, different companies and, and well, just various people would want to come to the conference and why it's gaining like a good reputation for exactly what we just said, like El Salvador announcing legal tender and things like that. Um, when it comes to, if I'm listening to this podcast and I am pretty new to Bitcoin, I don't know, maybe I only sort of worked out what the hell it is about a month ago. And I'm listening to this. Uh, why should I go to the next Bitcoin conference? And then similarly, like the second part, it's almost a separate question. I'm someone who's, you know, I don't know, I, I, I've known of Bitcoin for six years. I'm super into it. I feel like I know lots. I've read Mastering Bitcoin and Crypto Economics you know but why should i go to this physical event if i'm the expert you know why why should these two various camps of people who might be listening right now uh i guess there might be separate reasons but why should they come to the conference like what what is it that they will gain from it oh man so much to gain so much to gain first and foremost if you are in any way looking to get your foot in the door in this industry professionally it is an absolute requirement. There is no better way to get a job than to go to Bitcoin conferences in general, meeting people in meet space in general. There's no better way to get a job. And then that's how I got my job. I actually went to a shitcoin conference and got a Bitcoin job out of it. This is the ultimate Bitcoin event. This like that event that I went to was like 2000 people. This event, this past uh, iteration was 25,000 people. And it was quite literally every single business that had a marketing budget that was in the Bitcoin space. And the ones that didn't have a marketing budget were still there as attendees. So like BitRefill was there. I mean, y'all y'all were activated at the event and a lot of other companies, like every single, like I, I can't even uh, list them all. They were all there. So uh, that is the ultimate opportunity to network. Uh, the Bitcoin conference is just one event that's happening in the, you know, that location for that entire week. So Usually the entire week leading up to the Bitcoin conference, there are multiple other conferences happening, tons of hangouts, tons of meetups, tons of different events, beef steaks, barbecues, dinners, you name it, you know, Robert Breedlove and Jordan Peterson hangouts, you know, all this different stuff, like don't even come to the conference, just go to Bitcoin week. Like it doesn't matter. Like you have to be there. That is where the energy coalesces. It's palpable. I'm not sure if either of you were, we're in Miami this year, but everyone that was there said like the, you could just feel the energy. Uh, it's kind of like this peak life feeling and you just can't get it unless you're there. Uh, and people seriously have a like post-conference like depression. Like it's legitimately a thing. You, If you don't believe me, just tweet about it and, pe- and like very prominent names will talk about it. It is a real thing. Like it is like living in the Citadel and hyper-Bitcoinization for a weekend. So if you're an enthusiast, like you have to go, go wear a mask. If you're in them, who cares? You can, you can buy a ticket with a throwaway email. As long as you keep the, as long as you have the email long enough to get our email, uh, our email to you with the actual PDF, you're good. You, no one needs to know your real name. You can have a, you can wear glasses and a face mask on plenty of people do that. Plenty of other people just go and, you know, as themselves, whatever. It, it's just a fantastic environment. You know, like what, imagine just walking down through the lobby and you bump into Adam back. Like this is the type of environment that we're talking about. And he's just hanging out. Like seriously, he's just hanging out trying to meet people. So uh, it's really, really unbelievable. And honestly, I just don't know how much longer this is going to last. Like at some point, Bitcoin is just going to be part of everything. And there isn't going to be, you know, there aren't internet festivals. I mean, there are, but it's just, you know, it's really not the same thing. So like the moments that you can walk down the hall, bump into Adam back, rub shoulders with Safi Dean Avmus, all these people that are just absolute legends in this space uh, and have a conversation with them and just be around this community of a burgeoning technology, like that, this is fleeting. You, ha- you have to appreciate what that's like. And, you know, again, getting jobs, starting companies, Swan Bitcoin was started out of meeting people at Bitcoin 2019 in a presentation that Corey Clipson gave, like that's just one example of millions, right? Um, so millions is maybe exaggeration, hundreds, thousands. So um, it's going to continue. Bitcoin 23 is going to be incredible. And even if you don't come to our event, go to other Bitcoin events, go to your Bitcoin meetup, because, you know, this is just the biggest of, you know, uh, uh, 
tons of social gatherings that are happening in the Bitcoin space. 